that is not going to go away. Not anytime soon. I was hoping the tickle in the throat would go away, but no, no such luck. Okay. It's not a cold, it's just a tickle in the throat. Something agitated my throat. <coughs> I really wish I could get rid of it, but I can't. So here we are. It is time to be ninja. And to be ninja in the stealthiest way possible. Which still really isn't all that stealthy. It just involves running away from fights with humans. And yes, there is a distinction there. So shall we begin? In the Bakumatsu era of feudal Japan, the shinobi remain in the shadows even amidst the upheaval of societal change. To one such man, the secret orders are given. Sneak past countless guards and traps to rescue the hostage. Can he kill 100 men? Or more you know, more uh, relevant to what we're doing, can he kill exactly zero men? Even if there are a lot of undead and demons and mechanical things that do not count as men for our purposes, that will be dying. If we completely avoid any combat whatsoever, we are not finishing the chapter. And, uh, Odie here wants to know how things are progressing. See, so they have a prisoner. They have a mechanical friend who is nearly complete. <clears throat> and somebody wants to handle spirits because they've not had a fresh human in ages So in another part of the country, we have dude here that cannot complete his mission. Dude named Hayate. We we won't be seeing him past this cutscene. Yeah, a little bit, doesn't it? A little bit like Game Center CX. And this dude is a little bit old to do the way of ninja sneakery. Hayate being apparently a leader of the uh, ninja clan here. Has one... As one uh, complete and total noob ninja that just shows incredible promise that he thinks he can send on this. And this noob is called Oboro. Yeah, someone made an effort with the art, yeah. Oboro Maru. 
Bring him here immediately. But he has been with us the whole time. Hiding in the roof. So we have a blue-haired ninja. And just because it's useful to actually know what we're doing. And perhaps we've heard of the Ode clan. One of the many families who want to take advantage of the chaos. The ultimate goal of disposing the Tokugawa shogunate. Ode Iao is holding a political prisoner in his castle. Our ultimate goal is to rescue this dude. How we do it... We could become the shadows, silent as the stars, or just kill anybody who looks at us funny. And whichever path we take, nobody must be aware of your presence. This is a lie. And we get pulled aside by Hayati before we leave. We get a cloak of invisibility. And if we hit the Y button, we become basically invisible and intangible. As long as we're, you know, standing somewhere. Which is going to be pretty useful for a no-kill run, I have to say. And he's going to get himself a nice running start. The feudal times of ancient Japan are drawing to a close. As the era draws to a close, the future has become fearful and uncertain for many. And yet there still remain those whose silent acts can change history's course. The Shinobi. And he got himself a nice running start to launch himself into the sky with a kite. Oboru Maru of the Inma Ninjas is one such. Is it life that awaits him in Ode Iao's springing castle, sprawling castle, <clears throat> or death? Or a funky mixture of both? <clears throat> And we have the Bakumatsu chapter, the Secret Orders. Now, as we play through here, you may wonder when we're going to run into this um, this prisoner. Yeah, I, I wonder that during this type of play, too. But we managed to land right behind a couple of guards here. We can walk up and attempt to uh, talk to them, but they, they're they not going to be friendly. Also notice the two straws sticking out of the water there. They're, they're tracking us. However, we can hide and they will suddenly forget that we were there and go off about swimming randomly. But if we, but if we reveal ourselves, they will come back towards us again. Um... This is going to happen in every scene, square of the game. Any walking enemies are just kind of automatically drawn towards us, whether or not they can reach us. So, we would like to do this without killing anybody, but unfortunately we are going to have to walk past some guards here. Who aren't going to allow us, you know, in. But luckily, with just about every fight of this type, we can uh, run. And dash out. That they're, they're going to be kind of content just to go back to guard duty, like the vanishing, vanishing dude. You can't walk while you're invisible. 
you can hide, but you can't move once you're hiding. It'd be nice, but no, they're they're not that uh they're not quite that nice. Let's walk up to this door and learn about a password system. So do they shouts mountain and they respond with river except for this poor guy who responds with potato and they know who he is so yeah whenever you see the word mountain you must respond with river whenever it is uh whenever it is a uh, mentioned to you also something that will happen soon enough now something that will happen soon enough I will bring up when it does happen and it is very annoying so let me let me make sure here because I don't know this path all that well I know a little bit of it But anyway, we obviously do not want to go in that door because we just saw the head the head guard walk in there. So that would be a bad plan. However, in here, we want to go in here. We also want to kind of make this dude... Okay. Quickly get back up there. Get ourselves a little bit of armor. still don't want to go into the middle just because it would not be a good plan so basically we walked in here with absolutely nothing and much like solid snake we're going to have to e equip whatever we can find inside this freaking place also notice that we are level two um we're, we're gonna have to fix that but it will be a little bit before we can fix it so you know So notice that Ronan, that is a Ronan, he actually knows where we are at this point in time, and hiding will kind of make him not come this direction as often, even though, okay, the words that sounded like the bell mean that the password has changed. Now when they respond with the mountain, we have to respond with origin. The bell will ring many times. Every time it rings, the password switches between mountain, or between river and origin. Yeah, so, so it's all types of fun. So now we're here. We'll get a little closer to where we actually want to go here. nothing down here that we actually need in fact if I went into that room that would probably be a very bad thing right now so we're hiding we are underneath that little uh, section of roof that's sticking out We can look around here. And there's the bell again. So the password is back to river. But there's not a whole lot over here. So let's uh get ourselves in a very bad situation.
is remaining uncovered that long has drawn both of them kind of in our general direction here. fire here. So, and this guy wants to know the password. If we use the wrong password here, we get into a fight we can't run from. So see, river is correct. And it lets us go in. where we have him walking back and forth. And if I am not mistaken, okay, password has changed back to origin. We want you on the left side of the hall, jerk. Oh look, someone went through a secret door. And now... You're going to save. What's the password? Origin. And he's going to let us patrol the attic now. Kind of do his job for him. And uh, we're here. We're now crawling around inside the attic. And there are, a, uh, there are a couple of dudes over here. Let Let's watch this play out. These are a, basically a father and son sneak team here. <clears throat> and they want to get to those little treasure chests at the bottom. And they are the Watanabes. Funny thing, the uh, Watanabe is kind of a running joke. Although the the uh, the amount of humor you'll get out of the joke is kind of a kind of a your mileage may vary type thing. So they would like to get the treasure and spread the wealth around. Yeah, it it is probably littered with traps. Yes. And the kid wishes his father good luck. However, his father crawling across that beam has attracted the attention of someone underneath. And he's dodging spear thrusts. but not well enough. And uh, there's the joke that if you see the uh, Watanabes, um, the father's going to die horribly. That, that just kind of the thing that happens. But anyway. So... They were crawling towards these chests, two of which are empty, and one of them has basically a single freaking coin in it. Yeah, there's that. And we can crawl over this to see to see things. Ooh. 
which I don't know if you heard that. But notice river is the password right now. Even though it was origin before we started that whole conversation there. So we can go over these to kind of get an idea of the layout of a few of the rooms in here. In those two, who thought that the storehouse's key would be in the storehouse. The head minister dealing with a merchant. Also, the mice, at least at this point, don't really do much. They kind of squeak at you. Castella is a healing item. And we see a uh, lecherous man and a geisha dancing for lecherous old man. Oh, yeah. That's not all there is in here. We have a way down, but we don't want to take the way down because the way down doesn't lead where we need to go. We find Swegen's Tabby, which, um, in an earlier very bad translation of this, we're called, uh, Mermaid Shoes. Water field immunity, if you actually look at them. I think that means defense 5 or something like that. And not only are they water field immune, but if you actually equip them, if you're standing on water fields, you get healed. I did not mean to walk over that. Okay, so we are done in here for the time being, but we need to go to that left door, which means we need to hide because, and there's another bell ring. Because this guy's going to pop out and be really annoying until we leave. So now, we are now, yeah, healing on water no jutsu or something along those lines. Okay. So, we can go in that room right there. But literally, the only thing it does is get us into a fight we can't run from. So, uh, we, we won't be doing that. There are items in there if you're doing a run where you can actually kill things. But since we are trying to avoid killing... We are trying to avoid doing any damage to anything human. And just a note, if you walk straight through the center, there's a pit trap right in the middle which drops you right back down to the beginning of the area. So, uh, don't step on it. And the belt. We will be back here soon enough. That little tree is actually a path down, and it's one we will need later. But notice those two guys are... They're, all three of them are really following us. Unless we cover ourselves up. We found a storehouse key. We found some Castella. Which we will need later. 
and welcome to what is effectively a puzzle room. We have switches. We have things that we can... We have wheels and we have moving floors, effectively. I think those are actually just moving floors. They kind of look like big gear wheels or something, but no, they're kind of moving floors. We have moving floors in both the in going in all four directions. Anyway, the fastest way through here, if I don't mess this up. And the bell again. We need to flip all the switches in this place. And we need to get down to that one, but you notice right now all the gears are turning away from it. And if we go in the wrong way, we are dumped into a pit. Yes, there are giant gears. So you notice we can't quite get to the pits we need to get to yet. So let's see... We're stuck in here. This here. Flip that. Loop all the way back around to the beginning. Don't take that or you'll get dumped right into the pit. You can crawl slightly faster, but I've found that that's a bad idea to do so in this little area. And flipping that switch has uh, kind of made those two gears go down in the middle. So we can get here, then we can just go here. Because the moving floors dump you into the pit, basically, and the pit manages to dump you into the basement. Into a jail cell. Which we do not have a key to actually get out of yet. We will eventually. So, we can have that, then we go up here. Grab ourselves a grappling hook, which is a one-use item. Which allows you to cross certain, certain holes in the floor. Let's see. The Let's see. I need to flip that switch before I do this. That little stake right there is something we could actually throw a grappling hook on and have it cross giving us a way across the pit. But I'm not going to do that. <coughs> yeah, not exactly uh not exactly tech-wise appropriate for the scene, which there is a reason for that. So we get a few, we get a wind scroll basically. I believe Fujin is wind in this case. Bell again. So now we need to get back to that ladder and take it down. We flipped all those switches just to get access to this ladder. This drops us here. So we can go right back up. No big deal. Now, am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong. Did I mess up? Hmm. 
Yeah, it is. Okami usually is. People like Okami. Oh yeah, we do not want to be here yet. Oh, we do not want to be here yet. Okay, let, let's... Yeah, we are here way too early. Okay. <clears throat> there are a couple of things we need to do. Don't want to fall in that pit. However, we need to backtrack. And now we need to fall through here. And of course the bell's going to go off again. And we're going to do the same thing we did earlier. We're just going to get out of here. And dash through the door. Yeah, nothing left in there, okay. Now. Jerks. Can you two please lead? Thank you. We can go around here. And this is the storehouse. Which we have a storehouse key for. the bell's going to go off again. So, we have a room. A big open room with an empty box, or well, a box. That we can't, we have to enter the main square of it. And now, Super Sprinter Ninja here. We want the box, but we also don't want to get into a fight. Come on. Because getting into a fight does us absolutely no good. Invisibility makes you intangible. Okay, so now we have the basement key. So now... I, sh I believe we can pass right through, yeah. We've already... They've seen us. They know who we are. It's a weird sounding bell, I'll say that. So, let me just take a second here, get my bearings. I need you all the way to the left. Yep. Yet, 
We can bother him later. Not worth saving yet. I think saving here would be a good thing, though. And, of course, that's going to go off. Get back here, dice. Hmm. Now... You may wonder how we're supposed to level up in this chapter. If uh, we can't kill any people and people are what we're running into. I'll show you. Inside this room are two lost souls and a woman. And a bunch of boxes. Now we obviously, we do not want to talk to the woman at all, but... The Lost Souls... We can actually fight. And we're going to have to. The good thing is, these guys don't actually fight back. Or at least in all the time I've been playing, and all the time I've spent fighting them in the past, they don't fight back. But we got up to level 3, gained water arts, and we absolutely under no circumstances want to talk to that lady right there. Because she will get, in, she will get us into a fight we cannot run from, and now, in a typical no-kill playthrough, I'm going to stop keeping track of the bell now because I'm going to forget eventually. In a typical no-kill playthrough, you will, uh... You will uh, basically sit here and farm these two lost souls for a very long time. In my case, there is this is several hours of farming ahead. However, flame arts gained, 
just to kind of show you what's going to happen from here on out. We walk up here, get into a fight. Which can knock them out in one hit. So you no longer have to worry about doing multiple, multiple fights and all that. And as to the second reason you do not want to talk to the lady, besides the fact that she will mess up your no-kill run if you talk to her, if you kill her, you no longer get these respawning ghosts. So you no longer have your only real source of experience for this chapter. But yes. Because I don't hate you guys. We have a uh, Oboro here at a uh, level 4. Which just because I will save it there because I'm pretty sure I didn't advance any further in the story. I did. Did I not? No, I just did not equip the top knot that I had to him. That's the only difference, okay. And I had equipped the Genji's Tabi that I picked up. But yeah, now he's level 23. And, um... He, he's still not capable enough to handle one of the optional bosses, but he is totally set up to handle the other one. Also, the password checks, well, not a thing of the past, are going to be a lot less of an issue. We don't have very many of them to go, so I'm just going to kind of save before I talk to anybody who might need a password. And if I pick the wrong one, I just go back and do it again. Because I really don't want to keep flipping that die back and forth over and over and over. And also, I completely forgot exactly which uh, password we're on right now. So anyway, yeah, that that's the fun thing. I did that for a very, very, very long time. Now the question is, did I actually do what I should have done? I think I did. <laughs> 